All right, folks, you've gotten to this stage where you've planned your eclipse, and now it's time to look at some weather stuff. And I find this to be very, very important for eclipse chasing. Um, if you're just out there trying to go for the eclipse and you get lucky, then you get clear skies and you see the sun. If you don't get clear skies, then you're in trouble because you won't see the eclipse and you won't be able to see this awesome spectacle that's about to happen next month. Let's talk about weather really quick. Um, when I chase after eclipses, uh, and both Stephanie and I, we've, we've both been through cloud outs before. For her, uh, yeah. actually, how many times did you get clouded out? Two, actually. Yeah, two. Um, once in Shanghai for her and once in 2013. Yeah. For yeah. me, for me, it was a partial cloud out in 2009 and a, and a full cloud out in 2013 in Ethiopia. So uh, what do I look for when it comes to uh, weather? So let's talk about that really quick. Very important topic. Understanding basic meteorology is really helpful. Um, just understanding a few things. So you have high and low pressure. Uh, low pressure systems are basically areas at which there could be potentially rain, uh, cloud formations and all that. It's just basically meaning that a lot of uh, air is rising from the ground. That's why it's lower pressure here. If you see on weather maps and you big, see a big L, that basically is a little cyclone of air going up into the upper part of the atmosphere. And that usually has a lot of clouds. High pressure systems, uh, and you'll see that by an H on a uh, weather map, um, usually it, the air is coming down from the atmosphere. That's why you get a higher pressure on the, on the ground level. And when you get high pressure, you get clear skies. So you want to look for high pressure areas. Uh, other things to look for uh, for basic meteorology is understanding like cold fronts and warm fronts and things like that. So whenever you get stuff like a cold front coming along, just know that cold fronts will usually pass really quickly and behind the cold front is clear skies. Uh, other things to look for, uh, warm fronts. When warm fronts move through, they're very slow and you won't be able to get that clear sky right behind it. So you gotta be wary about those kind of storm systems that come through. Other things during eclipse times, uh, you'll also know that if you're watching an eclipse map or a weather map, uh, if there are storm systems rolling your way, such as a hurricane, well, hopefully not a hurricane, or other uh, uh, other um, storm systems that are coming through. If they're just coming through and you're right near that area for the eclipse time, better think about moving your eclipse site, for uh, your viewing site for the eclipse. Uh, other things to look at. Uh, I look for rain shadows. So this is your solar eclipse. It's quite interesting. Uh, it's going to pass through uh, the Rocky Mountains. So a lot of times, uh, let's let's imagine this being like Oregon, and here's the coast. Here's water. So anytime you're by the coast, you're going to get a lot of moisture in this area, whether it be fog or or it be uh, cloud cover or whatnot. You don't want fog. Fog is very very bad. We'll talk about that as we get to the valleys. So as this clears up, the air, if it's going this way, it'll start to dry off. And as it hits a mountain, the air goes up, and as warm, moist air rises, it'll condense on this side of the mountain. As the air continues to go through, it has dried off, and you get what we call a rain shadow. So you want to look for areas where there's a rain shadow. To give you an idea, in 2016, uh, solar eclipse, I was in an island called Palu, and I would notice on the chart every single day that there was this mountain range. And behind that mountain range, the, on the infrared was usually clear. And I knew that was a rain shadow because the wind was blowing in this direction. So that means by this time, it would have been uh, very clear skies. And by golly, it was clear skies when I, when I got to that part of the um, eclipse. So you want to look for rain shadows. Um, through the Rocky Mountains, and as, as you continue like from the mountains, as it drops down to the Cascades, in that area, uh, into like let's say Boise and whatnot, it, it'll start to develop some uh, moisture again or whatnot. But as you hit the next mountain, the same thing happens. Now, valley weather, you want to try to avoid those because anytime you're between two mountains like this, you can get a lot of fog inside that, in that, inside that valley. So you want to avoid valleys. Uh, the Grand Tetons, for example, is an area where the roads go only north and south. So you want to be careful about uh, being there during the eclipse time because there's no way to get out of that and there could be potentially fog and fog will be disastrous. Accessibility is the other thing. So understanding the weather maps. Uh, nowadays, we've got cell phones and iPhones and whatnot. Um, to basically look look for our weather uh, maps and whatnot. So once you understand the basics of looking for these elements, at least this is what I look for, uh, then you're able to uh, deduct, okay, well, how am I gonna move my site on the day of the eclipse? Now there are cases at which weather does come in and you may be in an area where there's good climate uh, and then you gotta move ship. Keep in mind, we understand the climate of the area, but we don't get climate on the eclipse day, we get weather and weather is, unpredictable essentially. We can only predict that like the next day or two days away like that. Um, other resources that you guys can check out is uh, Jay Anderson's weather report. He and uh, Fred Espinak put this uh, 
uh, bulletin out every year for the eclipses. Jay Anderson is one of the main meteorologists and I learned a great deal from him after doing my solar eclipse movie. And uh, you can check out his site, link below in the description. And uh, he can talk about, he, he puts it up for every eclipse that's out there. So these are the things that I look for uh, when it comes to uh, eclipse weather. So uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll give you guys more tips on tips and tricks for the solar eclipse. Uh, I hope you guys can like and subscribe to my channel and uh, please enjoy more awesome pictures of this eclipse. Yeah. Yeah.